Hello, welcome to another edition of Ed Talks. My name is Katie and I'm an educator here at the North Carolina Aquarium on Roanoke Island. And today I'll be talking to you about snake adaptations. So adaptations are things on an organism's body or something that it behaviorally does that helps it survive and thrive in its environment. Some adaptations that humans have that help us survive and thrive in our environment include our thumbs, which help us pick up things, hold tools, or the pinna on the side of our head, the external ear. That's like a big satellite dish that helps direct sound into your ear opening so you can hear maybe a little bit better. Snakes, while they don't have external ears, have some other things that help them survive and thrive. If we look here, we can see that snakes do have bones. A lot of people think that snakes don't have any bones because they move in such interesting ways and they're so very fluid or they can fit into small spaces. But as you can see, they have lots of bones, lots of ribs and lots of backbone. Snakes are vertebrates like us. If you feel your back, you can feel you have a spine back there. So snakes have those bones, but they don't have appendages like us. They don't have limbs. Limbs help us do a lot of things, but without limbs, snakes are able to fit into different spaces. Maybe if they are following a mouse into a hole, they can go into that hole much easier because they don't have limbs that make them not fit. They also have a covering on their body. Those are scales. And if you look at a snake, their back scales look like diamonds or they're very close together for armor and protection. So these scales are close together and they're protecting the snake like our skin and our nails protect us. So those scales can be colored to help the snake blend in or camouflage. A lot of snakes are camouflaged, like the copperhead is camouflaged to look like leaf litter because of where it lives. It can blend in and camouflage from things that might want to eat it. On the belly, the scales are like thin rectangles. So these scales, because the snake is usually on its belly, right, because that's how it moves, these scales are going to be less vulnerable than on the back. So these scales are more for movement. They're adapted to help the snake move. These are for gripping. So a snake that climbs a tree, like a black rat snake, is going to use these individual ribs, can move with these scales and help them grip onto a side of a tree. This is also what helps a snake swim. Again, on the back, if we look, we can see a slight pattern to this skin. Snakes have different patterns and colorations to help them do different things. Some snakes blend in really well with their surroundings and do what's called camouflage. Other animals, like the coral snake, they are toxic and they want the world to know it because if the other animals know that this animal is toxic, they'll leave it alone. So the coral snake has banding on its back that's brightly colored, which makes it stand out. And that tells predators that are thinking about eating the coral snake, I don't want to eat that, it's gonna make me sick or worse. Some animals, like the scarlet king snake, use what's called mimicry. They have a pattern that is very similar to the coral snake and makes them look like they're toxic even though they're not. There's Other snakes have mimicry that is behavioral and it's not about what they look like but it's about what they do. So some snakes have rattles, they're called rattlesnakes. And they're going to shake that rattle as a warning to let other animals know that they're close by and maybe that animal doesn't want to get any closer or it might get bitten. Some snakes, even though they don't have rattles, will still shake their tail like a rattle and in dry leaf litter it can sound a lot like that rattle. So that's a behavioral adaptation that can kind of fake out a predator even though I'm not toxic and make them think that I'm toxic. Another adaptation that snakes have that's really neat is called independent mandibular movement. Now those are really big words that just mean that they have two independent jaw bones here. So if you feel your jaw, you have one bone connected there, that's how we talk, that's what we chew with. Snakes don't have hands, so they can't bring food to their mouths with hands and take small bites. They eat their food whole and they have to do it using just their mouth. So they have that independent mandibles or jaw bones. 
there are ligaments in the middle which can give a space so that those jaw bones can walk over the prey. They have very sharp pointed teeth and what they do is say my hands are the mouth and I've got something I want to eat. I'm going to take those sharp pointed teeth and I'm going to walk one part of my jaw over that and then pull. This part's going to walk a little bit farther and it's going to slowly bring that prey into my mouth. So that independent mandibular movement or those jaws moving independent of each other help them pull their food into their mouth and they have extra ligaments and muscles that allow them to stretch their mouth really wide to eat something bigger than their own head. Snakes are really awesome animals and they have really special adaptations that allow them to survive and thrive, like I said, and do really interesting things. So let them stay wild. If you see them at your home or at the park, Observe them, take pictures, take memories, but please leave them alone. Usually a snake, if it knows you're coming, is going to move away from you. So give it that chance and that opportunity to keep itself safe, keep yourself safe, and let wild stay wild and the environment stay healthy. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you again soon.